everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today I want to show you a really fun card using these gorgeous new foxes from the LDRS release. You may have seen my new release close up earlier in the week and it's linked in that top right hand corner for you. And this one is called Arctic Snowfall and I just love these foxes and owls and things in there. And I'm gonna create a quick and simple card. I've already stamped them out using the LDRS Hybrid Raven ink pad. Now the reason I use hybrids is because I want to use alcohol markers. But I could also throw in some shimmer or some watercolors. I could use any coloring medium I want. I don't have to think about what ink is in, um, what ink I'm stamping. I can just flip backwards and forwards depending on how um, that kind of takes me. Now, the reason I want you to do this particular one is because I want to show you one of my magic coloring tricks for coloring fur. So you might say, oh, fur's so hard. I don't want to stipple. I don't want to do all of these things. It's too difficult. Well, I'm going to show you a super, super simple way to do it. So let's add some color to our foxes first. I think I'm going to do these two lovely little ones here. I'm going to say it's mummy and baby. So let's pick out some shades that we want to work with. And I'm also going to do super, super simple coloring as well. Um, and I'm just going to talk you through it as I go. Nothing complex at all. But we're going to make them look really, really cute. Two. So I'm going to start off with an E00 base on here. And I'm going to start off just coloring in the areas that I think they would have colored fur. And this on the tail here, I'm going to flick in with my color and then I'm going to flick out with some white tints as well. So um, we'll have those in there too. Now you may sometimes want to heat set your black ink. This one's been left for a little while, um, but sometimes just heat setting it makes it a little bit more permanent, particularly if you're working on things like vellum or um, anything like that that is a non-porous. So I'm trying to think how foxes look. Always have a mind blank when I start colouring. The amount of times I get my phone out and I have to Google an image of how an animal looks so that I get my colour placing right. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you need to do and you feel that your cards look better that way, you um, can of course do that. So I'm doing colours in here and then I'm going to show you how to colour white as well. So lots and lots of tips in this video. So I've laid down my base colour. One thing I forgot to do was put something porous underneath. Um, my image because that gives my ink somewhere to go and otherwise I'm going to end up with some bleeds by the time I finished. So I just popped um, a piece of paper underneath, just regular copy paper, nothing special at all. Um, but you'll see that I then don't get any bleeds. So I'm just adding tints of my second colour here. And so this is the E02 if you're colouring along with me. And I am going to fussy cut them out. There are no dies for this. You could, of course, use a scan and cut, which is one of my favourite tools to use. Um, but I'm going to fussy cut these out today. And again, I'll give you some tips on fussy cutting. I love doing these tips videos because not only do we create a really quick and simple project, but also you can learn lots from them. So I do quite a few of this kind of style. I also do a project with the new release on uh, scrapbook.com's channel. And then I also do another project on the new release on um, LDRS's Instagram TV. So there's lots of places you can go for inspiration. And this is really gonna add that foxy red for me. And so I'm just flicking color in. I'm not doing any, you know, kind of complex or difficult coloring for this one. If you want to, you absolutely can. I'm gonna keep the baby a little bit lighter than the mummy. So she the snuggles in. I love those eyelashes on her. I'm not sure who illustrated this particular one, but I just love those eyelashes that she's got. Wish I had eyelashes like that. So I'll add a little bit of colour to baby, but we'll be adding more of these ready tones into mummy. And even their tummy's white, and because nothing is truly white, we will also be adding colour in there too. So I'm going in with more of my this is the E08, so that's more of this ready tone. And I'm not going to add any of this into baby at all. I'm going in with an E09, which is my darkest shade. Again, 
add it into mum. Tips of her ears, little fur in her ear. Then I'm going to go back to that lightest of the reds, which is the E07. And I'm not going to see huge amounts of that base colour that I started with on mum, if any at all, because I want her to be more into those ready tones. But it's nice to have a base colour down A, because if you've got any kind of lights and darks areas, but also it gives you a little bit of forgiveness, because if you want to go back, um, you can do that too. So then the E08. And the thing with alcohol markers is they layer, so the more layers you put on, the darker it's going to get. Then I'm going to add a little bit of blush into her cheeks before and into baby's cheeks. And that's with an E93. And now we're going to work on the white areas. So white is never truly white. So I'm going to work because I want it to be very warm with those reds. I'm working with a W00 and a W1. And so I'm flicking into that red. And then I'm going to take my lightest of the darker shades, my E07. And I'm going to flick back. And what I want is a really kind of seamless bend, blend between the two. And that just is involved in layering. And another reason why you want that piece underneath. You can see my ink's got somewhere to go. If it didn't have anywhere to go, it would bleed straight in to um, my project, which is not what we want at all. So I'm adding some of this W00 all around. Kind of wishing I'd heat set because I've had a couple of little bleeds there. Um, if you heat set, you will not have those issues. And again, I'm just adding a little bit of texture in. Also adding some of that darker W over some of those red areas just to kind of tone it all in together. Inside of their ears. But it's coming together to be a really nice kind of warm piece. I'm going to go back with that E02, kind of bring his colours into baby a little bit more, because I want baby to look that kind of sweet lighter colour. Do you see there, super quick and simple colouring, and now we're going to add that fur texture. So I added no fur texture while I was colouring. I have a piece here of washcloth, just cheapy Ikea or Amazon basics, and I just cut them up into pieces each time. I've got some of the Copic Various 00 Blender in a big bottle. And all I do is squirt a little bit on. You don't need a huge amount. And now I'm gonna put this onto my image, couple of seconds and lift. And just as I go, I keep turning the piece so that I don't put any red pieces on the grey and this is another reason I do it this way is because if I want to fussy cut it out if it does go out beside the lines a little which it may do adding that colourless blender it's not going to be an issue at all you can see here where it's kind of started to run but we're going to get rid of all of that but what it does do if I lift this up you see all that texture you now have in there and that's just happened whatever texture you've got so if you had a piece of denim that you did this with you'd get a denim texture in there but because we've used that washcloth you're going to get that furry texture so that is how we create super quick and simple fur and you do not need to be an expert colorist and you can do that with any alcohol markers so if you're spectra noirs or chameleons if you have um Tonic markers, you can just buy that various 00, we'll make sure we link it up in the description for you. I buy a big bottle probably every couple of years and then it lasts me all that time and I can do fur and lots of other techniques as well. But that is one that I think you will love and you will use a lot. Again, I'll link out those Amazon basic washcloths I buy that I just cut up as and when I need them. Um, it's just really handy if you're working with alcohol inks or you're working with things like this. I don't have to worry about reusing it if I don't want to. The other thing is it will soften your line. So if you want a nice hazy edge, maybe you're doing something in the moonlight and things like that, and you want that hazy edge, that putting that color blender over the top again is gonna give you those kinds of effects. So you can really play around with things. Now the other thing here is I'm fussy cutting out while I'm chatting with you and um, my fussy cutting doesn't take me very long to do because the easiest way to do it, if 
Find a scissor you like. I love these tonic Tim Holtz scissors and they also come in a smaller size if you want something super intricate and they come in a larger size as well. This is the medium. But what I do is I keep my scissors still and every time I move, I'm moving that cardstock. And because I'm moving the cardstock, I get a nice close trim. There's no shakes because my hand itself isn't moving. I'm just moving this piece. So you can see how easy that was. So just like that. So there is our pretty little one there. Now I've already pre-cut some pieces so that we can start assembling a card. And um, I'm going to also grab some B quadruple zero and B zero zero because I'm going to pop my little foxes on here. But I don't want to just look like they're kind of floating in midair. I'm gonna take that lower shade. So this is the B quadruple zero. And I'm gonna lay some down. I kind of want it to look like a bit snowy on the ground. It doesn't have to be much at all. So just a few flicks of that blue in there. And then I'm gonna blend those out. And I don't have to worry about it bleeding because it's just supposed to be a little bit for them to sit on. Like so. I also have pre-cut a piece of Blue Jay cardstock that I'm going to stick this onto. We're also going to want to assemble our card base as well. So these are just oval dies. Again, I'll make sure all the links are in the description for you. I'm gonna use a piece of this beautiful new pattern paper as well. And I'm gonna cut that down to four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm gonna grab my card base, up like so. And again, just take my tape runner. I'm gonna stick this beautiful pink and blue plaid piece onto our card base. I'm also gonna firm up my fold. My bone fold doesn't seem to be here, but there are plenty of things we can use instead of a bone folder I'm gonna use my plastic spatula that I have here as well. And then we're going to add this on with some foam tape. So I have my big roll here. And we're gonna pop some on the back. So you can see this card, we've been going about 13 minutes and we've created the card completely. And now I'm gonna add some onto the back of my little foxy lady. And I'm gonna pop that on there. Now sentiment wise, there are sentiments in here as well. So lots of different things. But what I like to do is quite often I will leave my card blank like this. And then I put a sentiment on when I send it because this could be a Christmas card. It could be a new baby card. It could be a, just a note to say hello. So I do have a lot of cards that I just leave blank. And um, I have a box of all my sentiment stamps. And when I go to send them out, I just pop a little sentiment banner down here. So I'll put a sentiment there, or I might even stamp one here, depending what I'm doing. But I absolutely love this little foxy lady. I love all that texture that we created in there as well. And I hope you learned some top tips too. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notifications of future Hedgehog Hollow videos. And please do give us a thumbs up if you learned a top tip today and you enjoyed following along with me. Hope to see you again very soon. Check out those links in the description for everything we've used today. And of course, a 15% coupon code if you're watching this during the release period. Happy stamping. Bye.